Hi, and welcome to Be More Super, the podcast. I'm Brian, your host. And if this is the first time you've seen this channel, please hit subscribe and the like button and the bell button and press any other buttons you see. It helps support the channel. Uh, so if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, you're going to love this interview this week. And we've got so many more to announce, but I'm keeping it quiet for now. So uh, hit that bell button and subscribe and you won't miss an interview in the future. I just want to remind everyone watching that this channel is brought to you and sponsored by the wonderful people at Prop Store. Prop Store are an amazing company based in LA and in London, and they deal with screen used props and production used props and costumes from your favourite TV shows and films. So check out their website, propstore.com, because they've got some awesome auctions coming up and they've got something for everyone. And also, if I don't know, you can't find something from your favourite movie or TV show, you can drop them an email and they'll get on the case. So sit back, relax and enjoy our interview with the wonderful Tim Perez. So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we are joined by a wonderful actor that can be recently seen in the end, uh, and it's devastating, it's ended, of Van Helsing. It's, of course, a wonderful actor, Tim Perez. Tim, welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you very much, Brian. It's a pleasure to be here. And how is everything uh, where you are? Because I normally ask... Um, you know, because of obviously all these interviews I've I've been do doing over the past year, it's been very much pandemic based because we can't get away from it. I mean, how is everything where you are with the family? How are you coping? How are things? Oh my goodness! Well, you know, myself along with everyone else, it it is it is difficult. It is problematic, and every day is, you know, every day is a journey. And sometimes some days are harder to get through than others. Uh, I'm an American living in Canada, so m my family is in is in is in California. So I haven't seen my family uh, in 18 months. And so my father, my father is 92 and he has Alzheimer's, and so I haven't seen him. And it's just it, that's that's maddening for me right now. So uh, I, I can't imagine what other people are going through with with their problems, but. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, it's, it's been it's been really tough not being able to see my father. Yeah. And what are the restrictions like where you are? Because are you in? You're on the west coast, um, so near yeah. Vancouver, I presume. Yeah. Yeah, we're I in mean, Vancouver. Uh, yeah, the borders are still closed, but I think if you have, if they're starting to loosen up a little bit. If you have a second vaccination, and you can document it, and you have to go through, you know, certain protocols like three days before you leave, you have to get a test. And so, you know, leaving and coming back is kind of problematic. And so it's still not really that easy to get across the border right now. And it's crazy in the UK, because in literally a week and a half, they are lifting all COVID restrictions. Yeah, how do so, you feel about that? Personally, I mean, I've worked all the way through the pandemic, and so has my wife. And uh, we've seen you know, what can happen with the pandemic. And I've got two small li li little girls. So if everything was lifted, I'll be able to take them, you know, to places that they wouldn't have been able to go to for the past year and a half. But infection rates are rising, deaths are rising, but they're just lifting it. And I just think it's it's crazy. I really, I really do. I mean, for the economy, don't get me wrong. I've got friends in the theatre that I, you know, I was wanting to get back into work yeah. ASAP. I mean, yeah. how has it affected you over the past year being a working actor with this pandemic? Well, it, it's 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 kind of funny. I've sort of had a reversal. Usually, you know, usually I don't work, and so uh, through the pandemic, what's happened is is that a lot of opportunity has opened up for me personally, and so for me, I've been I, I've been busy. And, and that really is a blessing. Uh, but, but my kind of busy takes like years of patience. <laughs> so, and so you wait, <laughs> you wait years 
to all of a sudden get extremely busy. So I've been I've been pretty busy and, and working and, and and that has really been a blessing. But everything is kind of comes with a little caveat of, you know, there's there's something missing and that's mm. your you know, the rest of your life. <laughs> so uh, you know <laughs> Oh, bless. I mean, obviously, you have been busy uh, because you've got some one wonderful projects coming up. Um, and most recently, uh, we've seen you in Van Helsing. Uh, in the UK, um, the fifth and final season is uh, is coming out on Netflix on the 16th of July. Uh, but I had special access to see the series beforehand. So I've seen you in your uh, glory as 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 i've got to say first of all how tall are you because in the scene that you come in um with your your neck neckerchief thing over, over over your 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 face the way they shot that you look about seven foot five <laughs> well i would be i would be short for a basketball player let's just put it that way i'm <laughs> i i i i think i used to be six four uh however as i grow I think I I think I shriek yearly, but uh, I'm six four, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm big for a La, I'm big for uh, I'm big for a Latino, that's for sure. My father was about yeah. six two, and so when I go to Mexico, uh, Mexico City, you know, uh, people just kind of like stare at me because uh, I'm uh, you know I'm tall, I'm tall for a Latino, I guess. Oh, excellent! I presume it's it, it it would be an advantage for many things. I I I suppose being tall. Well, putting uh, in Mexico uh, putting, City, putting putting things back in your cupboard, at, you know, uh, that's that's <laughs> that's 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 always a plus. My wife enjoys that. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do, do, do you know what my 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 wife says? The only reason why I'm here is to open jars for her. So. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I've been told I've been told I, I was born to carry heavy objects. So, you know, that is our burden in life, I guess. <laughs> and as long as they're happy, uh, it doesn't matter what That's we it. have to do. That's yep. it. Ha happy wife, happy life. Um, yeah. so, um, so Van Helsing, what an amazing show. First of all, how did you get the role? Uh, what was your, the audition process like? And what was it like working on such a show that's already been so well established for you, for you, for you to come in at, you know, the most pinnacle time of the show yeah it's been like it's been like winning like the lottery or going to vegas and hitting a big you know big big payout on a slot machine uh i've been trying to get on this show for as long as it's been as in existence and it the the right role just didn't come up and i auditioned for another role uh and and they 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 wanted me for bigs i probably because i'm a large person and so that just kind of works out I'm not small, <laughs> uh, but but in the end, I, I really really liked the character a lot. He he didn't have a lot to say, but he was very physical, and his sort of uh, it, his his quietness spoke spoke louder than than words in a lot of the way. And so I had an opportunity to to play a character that was kind of like quiet, you know, and and that was. And that was really interesting and, and fascinating for me. But the, the show overall is like a well-oiled machine. The crew is amazing. They were under like strict COVID protocols that they followed. And uh, they were just, it, 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 from the top down, from customers to, you know, the people who put your makeup on and hair, it, everyone was just so beautiful and helpful. And just, you know, their attitudes were amazing. Their attitudes kind of reflect how the show is. And so mm. it's kind of funny. If the show's kind of wonderful, you can kind of bet the crew kind of feels like the show when they're working. And so that's kind of, and that's kind of what it is. And so when you act, you just sort of like slip right into something that's already well oiled and you just kind of like, you know, you just swim, you just swim with the fish. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> and it's pretty, and it, and it should be, and it should be pretty effortless. Mm. And obviously, we see you as biker bigs, um, and then am I right in saying that you uh, become a vampire as well? Um, am I right in saying because there was so much action, and I swear I saw you running as a vampire. Is that right, or am I seeing things? Yeah, yeah. You saw an yes. old dude running. You saw an old dude running, and I had to do a baseball slide underneath uh, uh, a closing, 
door, I guess you call it, one of those, you know, factory mm. doors. And so, yeah, I had to slide like 10 times on, on cement and I enjoyed it thoroughly. So all those years of me practicing my baseball slide actually, you know, came into practice <laughs> when I'm an old dude, you know, and I still have to, I still have to get it up and go, you know. <laughs> mm. and, what, and, and what was it like working, um, you know, previous projects before the pandemic? And obviously you, 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 you touched on how well prepared they were. Um, I mean, what was the experience like to be on set during the pandemic, you know, compared to, you know, pre previous things that you've done before? Yeah, being on set's weird anyways. Being on set is like, you know, the first day of school. Uh, you don't know anybody. You feel out of place. You, you know, you're afraid to say anything. And so it really is an interesting phenomenon. But being on set in a pandemic is even stranger, whereas you, you can't, you can never see anybody's face. You can have a relationship with somebody on set, but you will never see their face. Uh, the actors are the only people who can take their masks off when it's time for them to speak. And then you have to put them on again. And so you have to be sort of really regimented about that. So there are all these safety rules that you have to do. And that's on top of your acting. So an mm. element of uh, an element of danger is kind of, you know, sort of injected into the whole thing. And so it makes everything that much more, I think, visceral and sort of important you know, because I guess we're risking our lives to like, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, to be entertaining in a way. And, you know, we're lucky to be working. But, yeah, there was there's an element of there's an element of danger. That's for sure. I mean, I don't want to ruin it for people that haven't seen it yet. But but the ending, uh, you know, part of it is being left open for maybe a spin off series, which um, is by one of the sisterhood yeah well yeah so yeah that'd be that'd be cool that that would be really cool that would be so so cool yeah and do you yeah. think we'll see biggs again i mean uh, is he gosh i hope so from your How mouth cool to be? uh the, the lord's that would be incredible uh yeah that would be absolutely amazing and um uh, that'd be that'd be a dream really wouldn't it well, I'm trying to get Jonathan Walker on 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 the show. I've already had Alex <laughs> Ponovic on the show. Oh, he's I'm amazing, to get Jonathan Walker. Alex, Alex is such a great guy. Alex is such a great, great, just a wonderful, nice person. You know, I, I I'd seen him act in an acting class in a Larry Moss acting class, and I just always had my and this was years and years ago, and um, I'd always had my eye on that guy, and there was just something really special about him. He's also a big dude. He's he's bigger than I mm. am. He's a he's a really mm. large large big big guy a yeah. gentle giant apparently yeah he is yeah he's a gentle giant for sure <laughs> so so you know this one wonderful world of acting is it's not for everyone you've got to have thick skin you've got to be able to handle rejection so why on earth did you choose to get into this sort of career instead of i don't know sports or or i don't know an, an, a normal job like mine <laughs> well i i did want to be an athlete but you know the the truth of the matter is is that when a six foot eight, two hundred and twenty pound man you know slams the basketball over your head, you know uh, you just physically you just can't you know make the grade. You know there's just there is so much of a of a of a gap between the athleticism of the the elite players between just regular guys. It's it's just that's too enormous to like to like um, you know to, to to get over. But in acting, I found that. You know, if I really worked hard at it, that I could be I could be kind of good. And so when you find something that you're good at, you just sort of want to develop that aspect of your life. And so I'm really not good at anything else. I'm not, <laughs> uh, you know, don't trust me to do anything. <laughs> don't trust me to put a nail, a hammer, a nail on your door. Just don't do it. Uh, but yeah, I can I can manage to, you know, chew gum, walk uh, at the same time. So acting kind of is the thing for me. And I always thought of that uh, when people said yes, to, people said no to me, I, I bet I always took that as yes. And so that's kind of my bit of advice to a young person getting into acting. Don't take no for an answer. Just, you know, just it's always yes. And, and that's kind of how you have to sort of get through it, you know, because you do have to have a bit of thick skin and that's kind of something that you have to develop over the years. But you but you never really do get that thick skin that you want, you know, mm. so but but yeah, it is it is it is a, it is a hard life, and I wouldn't want my son to do it. And um, I'm, it's the only thing I can do, and so I have no choice. So there you are. So, but I do love so, it. <laughs> so so there's no backup plan. 
in no, case there's not, no, there, there, there has never been a backup plan. I'm just, I'm not a backup plan kind of person. I'm just kind of like, you know, throw all my eggs in one basket and, uh, you know, just walk straight to the gallows and see what happens, you know? So <laughs> yeah, all the chips are in and you're rolling that dice and you're not coming home without winning. No, that's, that's, yeah, that's, it that's really, great. Well, well, that's kind of have to be how you approach to, you know, your character and how you play roles too. you play your roles as if it were like a life and death experience. And so you really want to be serious and you want to be thoughtful about what you do. So, you know, to make light on acting is kind of easy, but really to to be really you know good at it, you really have to treat it in a, in a really special way. You know, uh, there are many actors who who, you know, who, are, who, who do well and aren't happy because they don't have a sort of approach to their life or their mm -hmm. work and they don't find meaning in their work. And so if you find meaning in your work, you know, you'll find happiness, you know, you'll get up in the, you'll get up in the, in the morning and you'll be glad to be up and ready to go to work or to, to look for work. I mean, how do you find auditions? Cause I know some actors don't like them uh, and some really do like, like, like them. I mean, do you thrive under pressure? Or I, well, I suppose it's easier now with pandemic because it's all video, uh, which means that you can keep on taking those uh, takes as, until you get that perfect. <laughs> yeah, I love that, that. I love that. Now actors are uh, taping themselves at home and sending them to the casting director, which I love. I, I just love that. <laughs> I can take my time. I can take my time and they give you more time to do it. In the past, you'd have to, you know, you get you get like maybe six pages the night before. And you'd have to be ready to go like at 10 o'clock the next morning. And so, you know, you spend, you know, the next six to 10 hours working on your role and then you get up and you work on it again and then you go audition, you know, and there's a lot of pressure and that's okay. You're sort of like used to that. Uh, so you have to have a system in place to be able to like work that fast. And that takes time to learn how to do. So auditioning definitely is like a learned thing. It's like a learned mechanism. And it's kind of very different than actually, uh, you know, working on the TV, t t the, the TV show or the film. So auditioning mm -hmm. is really its own separate thing that you just sort of have to endure. You know, it, there's a lot of components involved. And in the end, you just have to make it as simple as possible and just, you know, do your best. But yeah, auditioning, there is a, there's a, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. I mean, is there an sure. audition that really comes, comes to mind that, is is memorable for either good or bad my first job that i had uh off broadway uh about 1987 uh, at the public theater new york public theater in uh new york city uh, i was auditioning for the, the role of uh, thisby in midsummer night's dream and um in 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 my scene i had to I, there's this play within a play at the end of midsummer night's dream and my character plays a woman and this, the woman finds her lover dead and she just has an attack and she just like is upset. And I got really upset. And so, and so I was pretty, uh, I, think I, I think I was hallucinating. I was, I don't know, Shakespeare just like came alive for me. And it was, it was a tremendous kind of cathartic experience. And so mm. that just kind of happened in the moment. And I got the role. And, uh, you know, and, I, and, and the rest is history. I just kept, I just kept going. That taught me a lot. That taught me that you just kind of have to lose yourself in the moment, in the room, and just kind of be yourself and go for it. And that earned you your nickname, apparently, if I'm writing what I'm reading as Shakespeare by your friends at, well, at, at school. Yeah, well, my friends called me that when, uh, when I was a kid uh, because I did a lot of plays and stuff. And, um, you know, that was kind of a nice thing. Um, they were very supportive. Like, I, my friends never really teased me for being in plays or wanting to do things like that. So uh, so that was kind of cool, yeah. Did, did you find, just, just out of curiosity, because I did Shakespeare at college, I did performing arts, and I've got to say, Shakespeare was probably one of the most difficult things to memorise. And I remember I did a short play called Rosencrantz and Guldenstern are Dead. And literally, the, the, it was like a short play and it was question after question after question. And it was so hard to memorise. I mean, how did you find memorising Shakespeare? Because... Well, I, I think I think you might have done, you might have done the Tom Stopper play, which was Gillis, Rosencrantz and Guldenstern are Dead. 
which mm. would be hard. That would be very, very difficult because, mm. yeah, it's all questions. And just to sort of like, you know, that's like memorizing numbers, you know, mm. uh, the se a sequence of numbers. But for me, Shakespeare was easier because it's an iambic pentameter. And so there's a there's a rhythm and a beat and there's a logic to, you know, the language and stuff. So Shakespeare was always pretty, pretty easy for me. Uh, some of the speeches, the hard part about some of the speeches is that they were so, you know, they're 400 years old or 400 years old mm. that the language is so archaic that, you know, it, it gets like double, triple meanings over the years. And you have to really go back to the root of what exactly they're saying. And that could be really difficult. Like a lot of a lot of his analogies and a lot of his, you know, mysticism and stuff and uh, are very, very old. And so you have to go back and you have to really try to understand like mm. what actually is going on in the scene. And, and that can be sort of impenetrable at times. But you just have to really, really keep working at it, working at it, working at it. And all of a sudden it, it, something will click. But it's, it's, yeah, Shakespeare is difficult. It's kind of like the acid test for actors. Every actor <laughs> yeah. to earn their sort of like stripes has to do a Shakespearean play. Mm, and and the uh, great thing, like you talk about like Patrick Stewart, you know, for many, many years, he's gone back to the Royal Shakespeare Company and done a production near enough every single year because he loves it so much. Um, so I just hope they keep on teaching it. Um, I mean, obviously, it's the basis of what we do today, I suppose. If there wasn't any Shakespeare, there wouldn't be any uh, Van Helsing or uh, your new film. Uh, that's that's coming out very soon. So I want to talk about that because I was unaware of this story and I was quite shocked to read that it really happened. So it's called Doomsday Mom or Mom as as American or Canadian. We 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 say <laughs> Mom. Um if you could tell us what the film is about and who you play. Well, the film is is a, a depiction of a real story, and it's about a a mother who allegedly kills her two children uh, and a couple of her ex husbands and other other people, all in the in, in the guise of serving her own sort of religious kind of. Uh, covenant of that she is going to sort of inherit the earth when doomsday comes and mm -hmm. so when doomsday comes she will be the leader of the 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 new you know the new population of people that are going to be left you know all i guess the, the 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 religious people that are going to be left and she married this guy who uh was a was a was a was an author of these fantasy tales also and they are sort of in jail right now for the murder of his wife and the murder of their two children and 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 many more apparently so uh it's it's it, it's the most improbable story when i read it i i remembered it immediately from last year i remember the pictures of the children and and the the story is a real page turner you know it's 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 improbable how can a mother do such a thing you know and, uh, and, and, and now apparently uh, the trial is going on right now and she has been deemed incompetent to stand trial. And so uh, that's yet another twist in the many twists of this story. So the, the, the movie is just many, many twists. And my character is the detective who sort of like uh, helps solve the, the mystery of where the children are. Mm. I mean, uh, I was it's... really shocked to, to 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 read that this this really happened. I mean, how true to the events is this movie to fact? Because if the trial is still going on, I mean, has this movie got any effect on the trial? Because I mean, is it part fiction or is it all fact? Well, there have been names that have been changed. Like my 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 mm. character is based, I think, on a real person, but um, the name has been changed. So names have been changed. But pretty much it's it sticks to like actual things that are recorded. And so oh. it, it, what, what's amazing is that a writer could take all of these sort of it's such a it's such a tangled web to try to like figure out that a, that a writer could take all of the variables and kind of make them into a story and, and, and a story that 
you know, um, is, is kind of like a, like a murder mystery sort of um, thing. It, it, it's, it's quite, a, it, it's so, it's so convoluted, you know? Mm. I mean, when you first saw this script come across your path, I mean, were you hesitant or were you, yeah, I'm going to do this. This seems, you know, I can get my teeth into. And I mean, were you hesi hes hesitant about doing the part? Because obviously it's based on these horrific, alleged, you know, things. Yeah, I was hesitant. I was, I, I, I was like, do I, do I really want to get into this story? And it's a true story. Uh, how is it being shown? How is it going to be done? Is it going to be respectful to the victims? Uh, so I, I had all these questions in my head. And I knew, whereas my approach, I, 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 I would always want to be respectful. And, and, so, and so I thought that, you know, this kind of story needs to be told right now because there are a lot of, you know, there are, there's a lot of magical thinking out there right now. And so I think that the only way to sort of kind of not educate, but sort of, I don't know, kind of kind of shed light on these on these on these types of stories that that they need to be told. And mm. so if they're going to be told, then my character had to be sort of a, a person who has just 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 common sense, reason and imagination, mm. you know, something old fashioned mm. like that to sort of bring to the story to to try to combat the you know the, the 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 fantasy of of the story so so i i think it's an important story to tell and you can't really shy away from stories i believe i think you have i think everything has to be told and i think the audience needs to be able to see them and they can figure things out for themselves meaning i'm not going to tell you what to think or what to say or how to feel but you're just going to see the story and you're going to make up your own mind Mm. and you're right I think people do need to see it as well and and I mean me and my wife we was watching a documentary on Netflix the other, other night called American Murders I don't know if you've seen it it's about a gen gentleman that killed his wife and two kids and I tell you what it made me and my wife feel so sick watching it and at the end we had a bit of a tear but we turned to our kids um, who wasn't watching them <laughs> watching it they were asleep but we gave gave them a big cuddle, and I think that it's brought to light, you know. Actually, you know, we're human, and and we, you know, we love our kids and our life, and and thank goodness we're not like these people. And uh, to make sure that you know we should be lucky to have kids, and and I, I it just astonishes me. It really, really does what goes on in this world. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it. I mean, where is it being released, and where can people see it, and when? It's it's on a station called well in in the states it's on a station called Lifetime, which is a which is a which is a which is a standard cable uh, station that that mm. produces a lot of movies for like say under two million dollars or such, and so uh, so it's it's on Lifetime, uh, and, and I don't know if it'll be moved to something else. Uh, but I think it's a I think it's a really worthy film, and the actors are are so wonderful, and they're so great. And pretty much everybody had my attitude about doing it. You know, everyone everyone did have trepidation. You know, because let me tell you, it is, it it it, it is astonishing, mm -hmm. and so you really have to be careful about how you how you do it. You know, you have mm -hmm. to you have to do it in such a respectful way you know, for, for the victims, you know? And so, gosh, your acting has to be toned down. Everything has to be sort of like, you know, kind of different, if, the, if that makes any sense. It's a funny story too. The day before I started shooting principal photography, I tore my rotator cuff on my, on my right arm, which is my, which is my go-to arm, you know? And I didn't know that it was torn, but I show up on set and I'm like, I'm turning green and my arm is just killing me. But I have to, you know, I have to shoot the actor. Actors can't be sick. It's just a rule mm. in the business is that an actor can, if you break your leg, you have to show up for work. So like a dancer, <laughs> we can't, we cannot not mm. work. And so I, I had to work and, and uh, it hurt. <laughs> I but bet. uh but i got but i got through it you know and it's just one of those things that you have to just sort of like 
fly by the seat of your pants because you're just never sure what's going to happen, you know, on the day, on the day you shoot, you know, but you have to be ready mentally to just kind of get through anything, I guess, mm. you know. And when is yeah. it going to come out? Do you know? It well, it came out, it came out in the States on July 26th, I believe. So I don't know when it's going to come out, when it's going to come out in the, U, in the UK. Um, uh, I'm so, definitely going to look forward to watching it. And I'm, I'm, I'm now following all the news updates for the, uh, yeah, trial, just don't but... let, don't let, don't let your kids watch it though. Don't let your kids. Watch oh it. no, no, no. <laughs> They're watching frozen. <laughs> And zombies on Disney Plus uh, repeatedly over and over again. Um, zombies. So, oh, do you know what? I know every song in in in, in that. And um, to be honest, secretly deep down, I actually quite enjoy it. Um, oh, of course. <laughs> but but well, hey, but let's but let's talk 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 about you and your acting. I mean, as as an actor, what has been your biggest challenge from starting out to today? Wow, that's an interesting question. My biggest challenge, I think, has always been my confidence. You know, that's always been my Achilles heel. And that's a secret, by the way. So I'm telling you a secret. Yeah. And so confidence is something that you always battle and that you always have to sort of regain and you always have to sort of make friends with and find <laughs> like every every time you need it, you know, because sometimes it's not there. And so you just sort of have to develop a system to to try to find it and try to get it back, you know, when you need it. Mm -hmm. So confidence is really, really an interesting thing to battle. Um, and I don't know why I'm not as confident as I want to be. However, when I am confident, it just feels so wonderful, you know, it feels so great. So, yeah. And do you ever get confidence. nervous? Oh, yes, very nervous. Uh, when I When I do a play, I'll show up uh, early, like two hours early, and I'll meditate and relax, listen to music. I'll stretch, warm up, and then about maybe ten minutes, you know, to go on. You know, I'll I'll be in the bathroom throwing up, swearing that I'll never do this again. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's a it's a constant it's a constant battle of your nerves. But once you're out on stage or in front of the camera, everything just changes. You know, it's like stepping through a curtain. And you're like a different person, like a different animal. You know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a ma maybe it's magic, you know. But mm -hmm. but it's but and I feel the way, um, I feel the way I like to feel. I feel like myself. But to get to myself takes a lot of you know anguish, I guess. Yeah. So 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 doing so acting is constantly really just sort of facing my fear all the time. And for some reason, that's very important to me. For some reason, that's like one of the most important things in my life is to is to face that, you know, and to try to get through it, you know, or embrace it or whatever. Mm, yeah. Mm. I mean, conf confidence, again, it's 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 I'm sure some something that that many actors struggle with. And you mentioned being on stage. I mean, have you got a choice or a preference on which one you enjoy the most? Uh, is it stage or screen? Well, screen, you definitely make a lot more money and it has its own and it has its own like sort of pleasure. You know, it, it's it's the pleasure is more kind of solitary, you know, because it's just you and that camera and the person you're acting with. And it's more like, you know, in a room, except it, the room has like 50 people in it, you know, behind the camera. So it's kind of weird. Uh, but but when you're in theater, it, you know, an, an audience of 20 is, is scarier to me than an audience of 800, you know. So anytime you're in front of an audience, that really is like, you know, that, that is like a cold shower. It, it is really daunting to face 20 people who are going to see you act. And, you know, uh, that's that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have you ever forgotten a line on, 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 on stage, you know, when, when you're performing? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I get older, um, yes, I have forgotten lines. And, you know, you, here you are, you forget a line and you're looking at the other actor and you're going, OK, say your say your line. God damn it. You know, you're in your head. You're saying, this. why is this guy talking? Why is this guy talking? And then you go, oh, shit. It's my it's line. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have forgotten lines. And you're taught in school or you're taught by your teachers just to keep moving on, man. 
something something will happen make something mm -hmm. happen and hopefully you didn't forget the letter or the gun or whatever you need in the scene you know it's not off stage and you have it but yeah you, you, your memory is crucial <laughs> and memory is crucial older, and can... memory is terror mm, and as you get older you can always be like marlon brando and have your lines on cards at the side oh uh, because apparently yeah. that is what he did in all his <laughs> movies and stage work uh he had all his lines writ written out and yeah, apparently well, his... he, he, he he wore glasses and apparently he didn't wear, <laughs> wear wear glasses so because everyone thinks he's such a serious actor it's because he was trying to read the cards so as he was looking he was squinting and this is a true story, by the way, from Sarah Douglas from Superman the movie. So when she was filming with 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 him, apparently he was squinting, uh, and everyone thought he was giving an intense performance. But in fact, it's because he couldn't see the cards. <laughs> yeah, fil film acting is strange that way, you know. So what you see sometimes isn't actually what's going on. But I'll take him reading over any actor memorizing their line <laughs> any day. You know, he's. He's he's my he's my favorite actor. So I know he reads, and I forgive him. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I mean, he's a stunning actor. Um, it doesn't matter if he reads. I mean, who 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 was your biggest influence when you were starting out? Because obviously, I mean, what movies were about that you 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 watched and you thought was amazing? And who did you want to aspire to be like? Well, when I was started out, you know, in the 60s, and that was black and white television sets. So I got everything in black and white. So my so I think my whole adult life I see in black and white, you know, and I'm, I'm most comfortable watching black and white movies. Um, I, I think Brando had a huge effect on me. James Dean had an effect. Uh, Montgomery Cliff had an effect on me. And uh, that that type of actor, that type of method actor. You know, from the '50s and '60s and '40s, they mm. they they were game changers, and and to this day, um, I don't think anybody could really touch them in terms of acting. I think that was a really really special time when a when a new type of acting uh, style was discovered, and uh, you know, there there certainly there are terrific actors today, uh, but uh, s somehow that they just captured this moment in time where. This, this 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 acting style was so new and so visceral uh, it, that it really, really just affected me and captured me and just mm. I, I don't know, it, it excited me and I had to I had to I, I had to do what they're doing. But I, I, I didn't understand what they were doing, but I had to I had to try to do what they were doing. Yes. I'm sure they'll be proud of you right now. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask as well, what are the what are the highs and lows of being an actor? Because I've spoken to many actors. Um, some have said that because they're Canadian, they de they get overlooked uh, for the American actors. Um, some uh, because they're you know a Latino background, they get stereotyped and cut typecasted to cer certain parts. I mean, what are the highs and lows for you? And do you see this sort of thing happening within Hollywood? As well, say? when I when an actor isn't complaining, something is wrong with him. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, being an actor is just kind of like a no-win situation. You're just, you're just, you're just never going to work. And so, um, you know, you can always look for excuses and problems and things. What's wrong with me? Why am I working? And a lot of times, the problem just is yourself. You know, I'm, mm. I'm a very tall man. I'm large, and so possibly. Either not going to fit me in with a guy who's five foot, you know, eight, or you know, or perhaps maybe because I was Latino, I, I didn't get certain roles. Um, but I don't tend to try to dwell on those kind of things. I just kind of dwell on what I can do and make sure that when I'm auditioning, I'm working so hard that I'm trying to be like two times better than the guy that's auditioning against me. So my my feeling is that I have to be twice as good as the next guy and that I have to outwork them. So that's kind of how I operate. I don't really dwell on like, you know, slights mm. or, you know, what I don't get. So yeah, I just can't, I can't, I can't live that kind of existence. Mm. I mean, a, a lot of people say that Hollywood is broken, but personally I think it's down to the writers. 
I think the writers need to write, you know, a lot more stories um, that are a lot more inclusive and di- 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 diverse. You know, as you say, like you won't get a character that's five foot six, but yet, you know, we need to tackle the writers to write some amazing stories. So is there a part that you wouldn't take if you got offered it? Is there a type of part that you wouldn't want, want, want to do on screen? Yeah, once I was once I was offered a role where I had to play a guy who had to wear a chicken suit, and that was like, that was like that was like going too far. I couldn't I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't I couldn't wear a chicken suit, and so you know stuff like that. Um, one time I had to play a coroner, and I was like, I don't know for some reason I just couldn't wrap my head around being a coroner, and I was like, no, I can't play the coroner. No, I can't play the coroner. No, never play corners. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure there are roles that I, I wouldn't want to play, but I'm kind of I'm kind of open. You know, uh, I come from the school where characters are if characters are difficult, uh, they present a problem. And 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 in that problem, like you sort of reveal your genius if you can kind of crack the problem. And so mm. I tend to like challenges. I tend to like difficult characters, you know. But, yeah, there are some things I, I won't want to touch. Chicken suits, for one. Chicken suits, that's it. No no chicken suits. And I was the same. Um, I had to do um, a rendition, uh, like a, a review show from the West End. And there was part of it that was for cats. And they wanted to put me in a jumpsuit and dress me up as a cat. And I said no. So cats, for me, is a no. And chicken suits, for you. I completely understand. There is a limit and there is a line to our, you know... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe ourselves. maybe if it maybe if it was like a you know like a, a goose or a you know or something, <laughs> or a, you know, but but a chicken, I just I I don't know, I just I got cold feet. Do you know what? I'm going to be getting emails from all those chickens now saying, what's, 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 what's wrong with being a chicken? So so you've acted opposite and you've starred with, with, with many great actors uh, and actresses. I mean, is there one that comes to mind that you've, you've acted with that you've actually taken away quite a bit of, you know, knowledge or experience from them from being on screen with them? Yeah, there's been a few, actually. You know, when you, when you act... A lot of things you just like you're you're always looking, and you're always watching the other actor, or you know. Uh, so you're, you're you're they're great teachers, you know. One of the great actors that I learned a lot from was F. Murray Abraham. That was one of my first jobs I had, and so I got to act with him, and that was that was quite an education. Morgan Freeman's another one that was a great teacher for me to watch in a show I did with him in, in, in New York, uh, Taming of the Shrew. And another actor, a, a guy by the name Barton Heyman, who was not really famous, but he's probably one of the best actors I've ever seen. And these type of guys I, I look to, to sort of, you know, set the high bar of where mm. I need to kind of, you know, where I kind of need to go, you know. And so they're, they're great teachers for a young actor to, uh, to be around for sure but yeah i do i do i do watch actors and i do you know enjoy them uh being around them and watching them mm. i mean do you keep any mementos from any of your projects or gosh are you not allowed to fun. say <laughs> no well you know i don't know i do i do i do really weird things like I'll, I'll take a picture of my feet in every, uh, I don't, this is really crazy. I'll take a picture of my feet in every like uh, dressing room I'm in for some reason. And I, you know, identify it. I was here, you know, in, 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 you know, 2009 in New York, da, 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 da. da. And so it'll just be my feet. So I'm kind of a mystery that way. I don't, I don't keep things. No, I do have a few pictures that I have from shows but I, I I don't keep a lot of stuff. I I guess I'm not sentimental that way, you know. Um, it's always kind of sad when you leave a, when you leave a character. You know, it's it's like a piece of mm. you, you know. So so it's not something that I want that that I want to linger or dwell on, you know, because there's just something because you're having such a wonderful time, you don't want it to end, you know. Mm. And then it ends, and then it's 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 too much for me to. Uh, to handle no i don't i don't keep mementos no <laughs> <laughs> but 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 we've got a lovely book to look forward to tim perez walk of fame and you can have all the pictures in there from each dressing room 
and you can do a little uh, paragraph. You see, you got it there, didn't you? Yeah, the real walk of fame. Um, so uh, that that would be an awesome book, you know. <laughs> Stars out there releasing books right, left, and centre. So why? God, not? what a strange book that would be. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That is arty. That is now. This is the twenty first century. Uh, people would buy that book. Um, so before we wrap up this wonderful in- interview, because I'm just looking at the time, um, what's next? Next for you? Is it a case of you putting your feet up now, relaxing for a bit, or? Have, have you got things in the pipeline that you, you can and, or can't talk about? Yes, I do have a show coming up called Made on Netflix, uh, starring Annie McDowell and Margaret Qualley. And I'm doing another thing called Two Sentence Horror Story on Netflix also. And I have a, I have a reading of a play that I wrote that's going to happen in August, uh, a play that I wrote about the Cuban Revolution that's called L. And that I'll do a reading at New York University Graduate Actor Writer Workshop. So that's coming up. And so I've been doing some writing and stuff. And so, gosh, you just never let the grass grow underneath your feet. You know, you just got to keep, got to keep doing something, right? Keep busy. That is uh, the aim of the game. And how can people follow you? And I don't mean physically. I mean on social media. Because I can't find you on social media. I, I Gosh, I am. I am a mystery. I am. I am. I guess I am a mystery. I'm just. I. I'm sort of one of those people who don't understand like uh, Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Like I need someone to explain it to me. I had a friend uh, sign me up, but I. I just couldn't figure it out. You know. So I, I'm just on Facebook. Uh, Tim Perez on Facebook. But yeah, I suppose I should have an Instagram account. You know. And but I. I don't know. That's. That's on the to-do list, I guess. <laughs> it's definitely a, a young person's game because when I started my Instagram, literally, I had to ask my seven-year-old daughter uh, because I didn't have a clue. Exactly. I was like, what am I supposed to be pressing? Do I? Ex- and I'm now so, I'm, I'm so slowly... I'm yeah, I know. I'm I know. so I've, proud I've, of you. Yeah. I have only just realized how to create a story on Instagram and I felt like I should have got a certificate. I really, really do. Well, uh, kids but, are so amazing. Yeah. Oh, do, do, do you know what? They're born into te- technology. And mm. and the issue is, is that we've got to be so careful because technology has changed. And, and you know, there's there's more not very nice people out there. And well, that's another say, story. Be, yes. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, you know, if you feel the same, but but as as a parent, we've got so much responsibility to create the next leaders, pioneers um, uh, of the world because, you know, of racism and and xenophobia and, and, you know, creating inclusion and diversity, you know, on one hand, I'm looking forward to, to, uh, you know, teaching my my, my kids not not to see size or colour or gender or anything like, like, like that. And on the other side, I'm scared to hell. I really am. It's such a an adventure. I don't know if you feel you, feel the same. Yeah, you sound like you sound like an amazing dad. Yeah, mm, yeah, I for try. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I try my hardest. But Tim, you've been a great guest. Thank you so Thank much you. for 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 giving me your time for a chat. And I look forward to everything that you do in the future. And I look forward to uh, Tim Perez's uh, Walk of Fame uh, in all good <laughs> bookshops. Um, I'll be sending so, it to you. Yeah, you could do a book tour over, over over here, and it could just 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 be your feet behind a curtain, and um, yeah, it would be great. But Tim, look after yourself. Keep safe. <laughs>